everyone and welcome to the 2020 Virtual Song Stages and Seafood Festival. Proudly sponsored by the Government of Newfoundland, Labrador and Palace Supermarket, your local grocer since 1948. I'm one of your hosts, Chloe Harris, and welcome to the fourth night of the festival. We're getting near the end of our festival now and there's still a lot of great food and music to come. Tonight we would have been having a scoff and a scuff down at the Bay Arena at the Chef's Seafood Barbecue. We're very happy to be joined by Chef Chris Chafe who will be demonstrating how to cook fresh Newfoundland lobster with sun-dried tomato butter and some cheddar and chive biscuits with entertainment provided by Gerard O'Brien. We'll be headed back up to Nan's Kitchen at Powell's Supermarket where we'll learn about how their famous fish and brews are made. That's all coming up right now, so stay with us. Chef Chris Chafe's Kitchen, where he will begin to show us how to make the fresh Newfoundland lobster with sun-dried tomato butter and some cheddar and chive biscuits. Hey everybody, it's Chris Chafe from View Restaurant. Um, rather be in Bay Roberts this weekend at the Song Stages and Seafood Festival, but obviously uh, it's postponed until next year. So uh, instead of that, we're going to cook at my house tonight. Um, going to do some fresh Newfoundland lobster for you guys, show you how to cook it in a little court bouillon and uh, Break it down, present it nice with a little sun-dried tomato butter and uh, some cheddar and chive biscuits. So the first thing we're going to get started, we're just going to get the cork bouillon going. I got some water already boiling over here on the stove. We're just going to add some aromatics just to get some flavors going throughout the, uh, the water. First thing, just a little bit of garlic. Don't need to chop it. We're just going to smash it. Nice healthy pinch of salt. We're gonna get some parsley. We're gonna take off some of the leaves. We're gonna use that for a uh, for the butter. So we'll save some of the leaves. We just kind of need some stems for the uh, corporal yon. We don't really need the leaves. A few parsley stems. We're also gonna grab a little bit of this fresh thyme as well. have some onion here just the skin off we're just going to cut that in half once I'm going to throw that in as well this is just a few bay leaves some peppercorns a couple chili flakes again use as many as little as you like you won't add much heat to your lobster at all just a little extra flavor also going to hit it with some white wine Lemon. So with the lemon, I usually just take my lemon, cut it into four pieces, and just give it a little squeeze before you drop it in your pot to get, get some of that juice out. And again, you don't need all these ingredients, some, any. It's really just, you know, some little extra for your lobster. You cover it, bring that to a boil, we're gonna let that go for, for a few minutes just to develop some of its flavors, and while that's going, we'll work on the butter. So what I already have done here, I'll show the camera. So this is a clarified butter. I did this ahead of time because it takes a little while. So in order to clarify butter, you just take, simple, take a block of unsalted butter I like to use. That way you can control your own salt levels in whatever you're making. Just take your butter, put it on a super, super low heat, you know, the lowest or second lowest setting on your burner. And it'll take a little while and you'll see the milk, the milk solids separate from the milk fat in the butter. So they'll rise to the top and sink to the bottom and start to brown on the bottom. And as they're on the top, you'll just skim them off with a ladle. Uh, after it looks like it's separated completely, you run it through a coffee filter into, into just like into a cool pot or something. Um, the reason for this is when you, we're going to flavor this butter, we're going to simmer it with some, some different ingredients in there. And if you don't separate your milk solids out, they will burn with the heat. So this way you just get a pure fat and you're able to infuse it a little better with the flavor. So here I've got my butter here. We're going to take another lemon. I just have a microplane. You can have a microplane and use a fine side of a, of a cheese grater will work. Just a little bit of lemon zest in there. Citrus and seafood, obviously, hand in hand. Some of that parsley we saved earlier, we're just gonna give that a quick chop.
Okay, the parsley goes in there. Again, we're gonna get some garlic. Again, as many or as little as you like. It depends on how much garlic you know you want in your butter with your lobster. Uh, I like garlic, so I'm going with it for a bit. A little too much. <laughs> Again, just smash it. That'll help your garlic release some of its flavors. It's just the best way to start garlic. Just smash it. Even if you're gonna chop it, you should always smash it first. three tablespoons of chopped garlic. We're gonna add that in. Again, some salt. Like I said, I use unsalted butter, so you wanna add some salt back at this stage. Nice healthy pinch of salt for sure. And what I have here is just some sun-dried tomatoes that I pureed with a little bit of oil. Um, again, you could leave them whole, you don't have to add them at all. I, I, I just did a little nice touch, add a couple tablespoons of this little sun-dried tomato puree, we'll call it. So we're gonna add that. Okay, and that's basically it for our butter. We're just gonna put that back on, on a really low heat and let that come to a slight simmer for a few minutes and then we're gonna cover it and let it sit and steep and it'll just develop some flavor as it sits. Okay, so as we see, our, our corpoillon is bubbling away very nicely. It's ready to add our friend Mr. Lobster, so I'm gonna get him out of the fridge. So, here's our lucky little friend. This is our lobster, so always hold your lobster by your back. You're gonna cut his elastics off. He's gonna wanna pinch, he's gonna try. If you hold him back here, he's not really gonna be able to get at you. So hold him back here, you wanna cut off the elastics, you don't want any of that rubbery flavor in there. So I cut the elastic bands off. Again, watch your hands, make sure he doesn't get you with those claws. And then you want to go head first right in the pot. And I'm gonna cover him and just drop your heat a little bit just so it's a nice slow roll. You don't want it to be too intense of a boil. Okay, so your lobster, your lobster about that size, you know, Anywhere, you know, 10, 12 minutes, I say close, closer to 12 minutes on this lobster. So we're, uh, we're gonna, while he's, while he's cooking away, we're gonna start on the biscuit. So it's just a simple buttermilk, buttermilk biscuit. I had cheddar and chives to the mix. Um, it's a nice buttery side dish to have with the lobster. Um, again, not a complete meal, but you could add, add some vegetables, some potato salad, something with it, and you, you know, you got a full meal pretty quickly. All right, so to start with the biscuits, I just got a bowl. And we got two cups of about two cups all-purpose flour. And some baking powder. We're gonna add about a tablespoon of baking powder. Okay. I'm just gonna mix that together just quickly, a little fork. Oh, sorry. And about a teaspoon and a half of salt. Again. As little or as much as you like with the salt level. So we're gonna mix that together. So your key with biscuits, when you get past this point with a biscuit is you don't wanna need a biscuit. You don't wanna develop your gluten. You develop the gluten, you end up with a, with a chewy, chewy biscuit. So there's really two key things to remember is that, like I said, don't need a biscuit. You're cut, you're gonna cut your butter in and cut it together. You don't wanna need it very much at all. And you need your butter to be cold. So that's the next step is we're gonna grab some stuff out of the fridge. All right, so we had 180 mils of butter, and what I did, I just cubed it up in little pieces and put it back in the fridge after I cubed it so it's super cold. Again, you can even put it in the freezer for a little bit if you want, um, it's a little safer. It's, you really need your butter cold so it doesn't mix with the flour. You want little pieces of butter mixed throughout the flour when you make your dough. That's what's gonna give you your layers and your rise and your biscuit. And your flakiness, really. So again, I just take, take my butter, and we're gonna, we're gonna cut it in. So you just cut your flour. If you don't have something like this, use the side of a spatula, um, you know, a couple ways. Some people use like a food processor on pulse for it. I, I like to do it by hand, but you know, there's a few different methods to it. 
But again, this way you're not developing the gluten in the biscuit, which will make it, you know, chewy in the long run. So you're looking for like a coarse pea meal. Once you see, you know, little tiny pieces of butter kind of uniform throughout, it'll take a few minutes. This could be a boring part of the video. People editing might want to cut some of it out. <laughs> but we're just gonna cut the cut the butter for, you know, five, six minutes. And again, you don't want to take too long doing it, because then your butter will start to melt and again melt into your flour, which which will cause not a very flaky biscuit. Thanks, Chef Chris. It's time to hear some great music from our friend Gerard O'Brien. Hello everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in song stages and seafood festival. My name is Gerard O'Brien. I play with a band called Kaylee and the last two years we played on the big stage in the Bay Arena. But uh, tonight I'm playing from a much smaller stage, I guess. Myself and Ronnie Power were actually booked to play uh, at a small plate venue. We had this wicked idea to come up with a great set, you know, and Song about that set. It seems really appropriate for the times. In my memory, I'll always see the town that I have run so well. Our school played ball. For the guys, young and old, and they laughed through the snow and the snow. Go in the rain, bring up the dark lane, past the trail and down behind the fountain. Those were the
stars and the bomb down fires and the gas that hangs on to a breeze. the armies in the stone are their own gas yard wall and the number of wire gets higher and higher with their tanks and their guns. Oh my God, my hand is done. The town died so well. Now the music's gone, but they carry on. Their spirits burn. Sounds great, Gerard. Let's head on back over to Chef Chris Chafe's kitchen to see how his dish is coming along. Okay, so the butter's all cut into flour. It's like a coarse, kind of coarse pea meal look. You see little lumps of butter still in there. You know, it doesn't have to be exactly perfect. There are going to be some bigger lumps in there, but it's not, not the end of the world. Okay, so the next step, again, super cold buttermilk. It's about a half cup of buttermilk. Um, just out of the fridge. We're going to crack one egg. And again, just a little fork, fork whisk. Just breaking off your egg, that's all. You don't need, you don't need to rip any air into it or anything, you're just, just mixing it together. Okay, now we're gonna add just a pinch of chives. Again, there, two or three tablespoons of chives. We'll add that in the mix. Okay, so now your next step. So we'll make like a little, little well in the middle. And we're gonna add our buttermilk egg mixture. Okay, and again, just gonna cut that together with your flour. Not to knead the dough. You will eventually have to press it together a couple times with your hands, you know, just, just to bring it all together. But you really want to cut down on the kneading as much as you can. You just, just bring it together. You'll see it kind of looks, you know, doesn't look like a, your typical bread dough or anything. It's, you know, very, very loose, kind of falling apart, crumbly. Gets to this stage when I like to add some cheddar cheese. Got about a cup, just, you know, old cheddar, just grated. You can use, you know, whatever type of cheese you'd really like in this, you know, and this recipe is adaptable to, you know, add some sugar, make it a little sweet and take out your cheese and jars. You can add different cheese, chili flakes, jalapenos, you know, onions, you know, it's, it's kind of endless what you want to do with it. So you see that's kind of coming together nicely there. So this is the point now where you're going to have to get your hands into it a little bit just to kind of put it together a little bit. dough. Like I said, just kind of squeeze it together a little bit. Try not to knead it too much. Just get it together into a nice, you know, kind of ball. 
working it as minimally as you can. Okay, so a little bit more flour just for my surface, just so it doesn't stick. Make a mess, we'll clean up later. So you're gonna put this out now, and here's another, another crucial part of my biscuits. So you're gonna roll it out, eventually it's gonna be about, you wanna, oh, sorry, you wanna flour your rolling pin a little bit too, because this is kind of a buttery wet dough, it will stick to everything. So we're just gonna roll this out to about, about a half inch. You know, as you roll it, it also you know presses it together a little more, making it a little more easy to easy to work with. Again, nothing exact. You don't need to break out a ruler. You know, just about about a half inch. And I like to fold it over itself. I'm gonna roll it out to, to a half inch again. I find this just helps with your layers. And one more time. So I got my oven preheating to 425. Well, it's already preheated, I should say. I'm gonna do that ahead of time. You need a nice hot oven for these. It's gonna help them turn out a lot nicer. So we got our nice, about a half inch thick. Now we just have a, a ring cutter. If you don't have a cutter, you can use a nice sharp knife, cut it in squares. I like to use round if you don't have a cutter. If you have an empty tin can or something like that, I've, I've at some of these festivals we do at Sonic City, sometimes we don't have all the equipment and uh, we kind of make do with what we got. So, you know, you can be creative and find anything to cut them. You really have to. I like to flour my ring mold a little bit so it doesn't stick. Start right at your edge, straight down. Cut. Same thing. Try to get as many as you can. You can press the leftover dough back together and get a couple more, but they won't be as nice as your first biscuits. It's just something about it. They just don't, uh, they won't turn out as nice. You'll see that after we bake them. And so we got our nice biscuits Just onto a sheet tray. And we'll get a couple more out of that leftover dough, hopefully here. All right, we'll just do two more for, for nice. Okay, so once your biscuits are there, the last step before they go in the oven, so make a little egg wash. So that'll just help them brown up on top, a little shiny, just a nice little finish. So just one whole egg. Again, just breaking it apart, make sure it's all combined. And just a little dash of milk. Okay, got my pastry brush, and we're just gonna brush the tops. Our lobster should be just about done, so we'll get these in the oven. We'll pull out our lobster. These should take about, let's say, about 10 12 minutes in a 425 degree oven. Uh, but keep your eye on them. They start to brown and they look like they, they've, you know, risen up a lot. They're probably done. Okay, so these are ready to go. Get them in. Best scrunchions, freshest potatoes we can find. It's 
working out. And that's what makes it so uh, so tasty. Um, so not only is this dish, I guess, um, you know, such an important part of Nan's Kitchen in the restaurant, and but but the fishery and, and this, I guess, line of work is something that goes back to the Powell's family for quite some time. I understand. Yeah, very long time. Yeah. Uh, some of my family members like to talk more than I do, but uh, <laughs> we have a big history in Newfoundland and the fishery going back, well, maybe 65, 70 years. Wow. And so your grandfather uh, fished, I guess as a young man, like so many uh, so many of our ancestors did up in Labrador. Yeah, he, he worked in the fishery uh, on fishing vessels when he was very young and he eventually went to uh, own several fish plants uh, across the province of Newfoundland. And uh, yeah, so we divested those and got more into the retail side of things, but our roots are certainly in the fishery. In the fishery, and of course that, uh, that's still a part of day-to-day uh, -day operations for you guys, when you can bring a dish like that to life for oh, ab customers. Absolutely, absolutely, and we're prepped. So, um, you know, I'll, most fish and brews lovers uh, need those scrunchions to go with that too. So you guys do that as well in the restaurant? Yeah, we offer scrunchions or drawn butter or if you're adventurous, both. Oh, <laughs> not for the faint of heart, I guess, hey? No, you, you need a nap after. <laughs> Good nap afterwards. Wonderful. So Adam, you mentioned that you are talking about your grandfather and, and the, the history there with the fishery. You mentioned that some of your family members love to chat a bit more about that side, but I know um, where you're more soft-spoken or quiet, um, you're certainly the foodie of the family. Am I right in saying that? Yeah, probably. And you like to get creative, and I know you enjoy traditional dishes like, like this for sure. Um, when it comes to fish and brews or any kind of fish uh, dishes, what, what do you like to enjoy here in, in the restaurant or, or at home? Uh, seafood dishes here, uh, certainly fish and brews, uh, when we're back full swing uh, with the seated customers, we'll be offering our, our, our seafood chowder again, our, our pot de gratin again, and those are fantastic options. Uh, at home, I just uh, I like smoking, grilling salmon. Uh, yeah, I like to eat. <laughs> well, we all share that love of food, and, and it's really neat that we can still do that, especially with the, all the other food lovers who enjoy the Song Stage and Sea Festival. So being able to even find a way to do that from a distance has been, uh, has been really, really wonderful. Yeah, well, we want to be here for our community, for Newfoundland and Labrador, and, and we want to continue to offer a fantastic product so you can, you can sit down and enjoy the atmosphere. Yeah, there's certainly ways to, uh, to enjoy it and enjoy each other's company from, from a distance, of yes. course. Yeah, two arms. That's right. <laughs> so Adam, you talked about some of the fish dishes you enjoy at home, but I know uh, something that you uh, really have a knack for as well are those fish cakes that uh, we love here in Nan's Kitchen. But you, I know you also enjoy that uh, presenting those at the Newfoundland Labrador Fish Cake Championship last year at the, at the festival. So I know we we certainly missed that uh, that really fun event this year. Um, but uh, that's something you've had a lot of fun with in the past. For oh, sure. we have. We enjoy it. It's, uh, Great atmosphere. There's a lot, a lot of chefs from across the province experimenting with different things, and uh, yeah, it's just fun to be a part of. And we look forward to being there next year. Yeah, 2021 is going to be uh, be a fun year. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Make sure we, we save some room. I'm sure everybody will appreciate it a little more. Absolutely. <laughs>
myself and most people in the restaurants, we're gonna present the lobster. The easiest way is you wanna take his or her tail, you just wanna grab it by its sides, use a rag, obviously just came out of the oven, or the pot, super hot, and just gently squeeze on the sides, you'll hear it crack. So that's gonna release, release the meat from the shell on the inside. You get to that point, I like to take a nice pair of sharp, sturdy kitchen scissors. Just start here on his tail. Straight up the middle. You get to the back of his shell. Okay. Then you just reach in with your hands. Finish cracking open the shell a little bit. You want to finish just if you haven't detached it all. Just open them up a little bit like this. You'll see the beautiful row in there. If you see any of the... Uh, the vein that runs up, you know, you want to pull some of that vein out if you can see it in there. Sometimes there's, sometimes there's nothing in it, sometimes it's full. You just got to get rid of that. No one wants to eat it. We pull that up, just pull it out. You know, that's how you get your classic, you know, red lobster advertisement look on the lobster on the back. So you get that done. We're going to just pull off, pull off his arms. So we're we're going to get the knuckle meat out of the knuckles. It's some of the best meat. Same with the legs. I'll show you how to get the leg meat out as well. So we're just going to pull that off. We're going to take off his, some of his legs. Okay, we'll the side. So again, just break off your knuckles. Just push them down like that. Again, to separate your knuckles, just find your find your line in there. Separate it, there'll be three on each leg. And again, I find my scissors are the easiest way just to you know find the side of it. Snip up, and it'll just peel out like so, and you get a nice little piece of meat there. Okay, so I'm not gonna show you all those, but you just do 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 that with each of your knuckles. Your claw, which is a lot of people's favorite, obviously their claw or tail. Take a nice heavy knife. I like to use one with an edge that I'm not too fussy on, so it's like a cheap cleaver. One crack, and turn your knife. You'll crack, and it'll it'll come right out of the shell. Just release your pinch your claw. There's your beautiful lobster claw. Let's see the other one. Now the legs, typically you won't get a whole lot of meat out of the legs, but it is super sweet meat. I uh, typically just straighten it out, something heavy like a rolling pin. And you see it just comes out like toothpaste out of a tube. Okay, so you get a nice little piece of leg meat. Again, it's nice if you eat your lobster and you save the legs. If you had a few people over for a lobster dinner, you save your legs. You can you can take the meat out and put it in like a little lobster salad for the next day. Make it, you know, a lobster roll for one or something. Um, again, no point wasting it. So you do that with all the legs and you get a nice little really sweet tender meat from the lobster. So we have that. going to take a little bit of our butter and we're going to drizzle that right over the tail. My lovely wife here filming getting the money shot for the butter. Okay and you can never have too much butter so we'll just serve a little, a little more on the side. Now our biscuits are almost done. Our chef is getting closer now. Let's head back over for some more music by Gerard O'Brien. The Song Stages and Seafood Festival, 2020. I tell you, it's one to remember. We'll never forget this one, I don't think. But anyway, we're coping. We're trying to make the best of it.
mind and make myself the same. Then I can look to you and die. I keep me on my team, although nothing goes down. These things are trying. It gets me there, nevertheless. I'm a heartless man. So you can see a couple of the ones that we re-rolled after. It's not quite as nice, but if you want to break, we're just going to break it apart and show you how fluffy it is in the middle. Nice layers. See, nice fluffy layers is what you, what you want. You want layers of pastry, not, not a uniform bread. So put a couple on the plate with our friend Mr. Lobster. And there we have it. It's a post lobster. Some dry tomato and garlic butter and some cheddar and chopped biscuits. Thanks everyone for tuning in. Um, hope you learned a little something tonight. Uh, we'll see you guys next year again at the Bay Roberts Seafood Festival. Um, one of my favorite weekends of the year. Uh, can't wait to go out there again. Um, and if you're in St. John's, please come check out View Restaurant. Uh, we'd love to have you. Thanks again. Newfoundland Labrador has become famous for their beautiful tourism ads. Here's Conductor.
you'll find a symphony unlike any other. But then again, so are the instruments. Newfoundland and Labrador. Thank you so much, Chef Chris. That fresh Newfoundland lobster with sun-dried tomato, butter, and cheddar, and chive biscuits looked great. Thank you once again for making this delicious dish. Thanks also to Gerard O'Brien for providing the great music for tonight. Once again, the 2020 Song Stages and Seafood Festival is proudly sponsored by the government in Newfoundland and Labrador and Powell Supermarket. Visit them online at powellsnl.ca and let them do the shopping for you. From their family to yours, stay home and stay safe. On behalf of all of us here, thank you for watching. Be sure to join us tomorrow for our final night with a cooking demo by Ron Delaney with entertainment by Darcy Broderick, Ronnie Power, and the Islander.